Divine Truth Assistance Group Group assistance sessions putting principles of divine truth into action. This recording is from the Developing My Will to Love group and is part of the Education in Love series. In the rewards of Developing My Will to Love presentation, Jesus encourages us to see that God is good and offers many gifts no matter what we do, but also offers additional personal and collective rewards that come from our choice to develop our will to love and obtain an education from God. Recorded on the 12th of March 2016 in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. Got a bit distracted, sorry about that. It's because my girl arrived, so I've got an excuse. You're lucky I came back at all. Okay. You definitely are lucky I came back at all. <laughs> you know that, don't you? <laughs> 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 uh, all right, so this discussion is about the rewards of developing my will to love. In the Bible, there's a quotation. It's contained in Matthew verses six, chapter 6, verse 33. And it says, keep on, seeking then first, keep, keep on seeking first the kingdom, and all these other things will be added to you. It's not actually what I said. <laughs> it's close, but I said, keep on seeking first God's love, and all these other things will be added to you. All right. So what we're going to do is uh, look at the all these other things. Before we begin, though, with the discussion of all the other things, let's look at what we've already learned with regard to what are the advantages or the rewards of setting your will in harmony with love. What, what is the true cause of pleasure? So it's living my life in harmony with love and truth, isn't it? Right. So... So that's the true cause of pleasure. In other words, living my life in harmony with God's laws. True cause of pleasure. So obviously one of the other things that are added to us, besides receiving God's love, is pleasure. So that, that makes sense in terms of... And it's sort of what you would expect in a way if, if God's good then surely pleasure would be the result of doing things in harmony with God's laws. And of course then there's the extension of pleasure over a period of time, which is joy and happiness, right? So joy and happiness are also Is that is that enough to motivate you? Obviously not. <laughs> yeah, obviously not. And that's that's the truth, isn't it? Unfortunately, we 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 seem to be not motivated. <laughs> I wrote the irony is our only motivation is to avoid pain, and we don't seem to be very conscious of how to create pleasure. Isn't that interesting? It's like 
you'd think if, if our motivation was to avoid pain, we'd know what creates pleasure, but that's not the case at all. Strange, huh? Okay. Now those uh, two things we've discussed a lot, and the reason why we've discussed these things a lot is because we want you to see that the true cause of pain and unhappiness is our desire to sin, our desire to live out, out, use our will out of harmony with God's love and truth. But I would like you to imagine now, just forget, forget that discussion for a moment, and imagine that God is good. I feel we don't do enough of this. We don't, we don't have any faith that God is good. We don't even spend any time thinking about the fact that God is good most of the time. In fact, if we're honest with ourselves, the majority of probably probably don't think very much about God at all. Right? Because we're so involved in our own life and our own you know, desires and passions and unfortunately we are fairly self-involved, you know, so fairly narcissistic with our lives. So we don't think very much about God and God's character and God's nature. But just imagine for a moment that God is good. What, what do you think would be the benefits? If, if God created a universe and God was good, what would be the benefits of living your life in harmony with the laws of that universe? What do you think would be if we go to Felix? Oh, just a, a lot of pleasure and satisfaction, and um, I joy. mean besides pleasure and satisfaction. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, besides that, um, if we go to Sandra over the corner and come down to Maxine at the front. I think beauty is one of those things because. Um, Already, even though we live in a degraded world, like emotionally, I still get completely so sometimes overwhelmed with um, what the, the, the natural environment is just, that's the only way I know there's God, if, if I believe in God at all. Yeah, okay, so let's uh, write that down, beauty. It is interesting, isn't it, that um, humankind rarely construct things of beauty. Have you noticed that? Mostly it's, we construct eyesores. <laughs> Don't we? And, and yet, even when we do construct an eyesore, um, God's laws are in operation, tearing that eyesore down back into beauty. <laughs> over, over thousands of years, eventually it is gone, the eyesore. Isn't that amazing? It's just So God, God obviously has a passion for beauty. And hmm. um, Maxine? There'd be no degradation on the planet, like no violence against anyone or any animal. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's sort of talking about the negative. What's the positive oh, okay. of that? Um, we'd all be angels. <laughs> well, would you, were you talking about degradation? Could I say life would be supported? Supportive of life? Yeah. Right. So this is what, if, if God was good, this is what we'd imagine, that his laws would be supportive of life, wouldn't they? No sin. Yep. Yep. And if we go, if we come down to Jane on this side and to Glenn on the, at the, that side. We'd understand the truth of the workings of the universe. Yeah, so he, he would share with us, wouldn't he, the truth about how everything works. Right? So that would be a nice thing to know, wouldn't it? Like, Instead of feeling like we're in the dark all the time, we, we'd, we'd, we'd know the truth about life and how everything works. That, that'd be fantastic, wouldn't it? And Glenda? Part of supporting life, there would be no carnivores, human, animal, otherwise. How do you know that, though? Because it, like, well, there, needs to be, there needs to be rubbish like things that deal with rubbish. Yeah, but what about lions attacking people or killing other animals? Well, like? So there'd be no violence. Yeah. 
is probably a better way of saying it. It doesn't mean there'd be no carnivores because okay. they're, yeah. <coughs> you know, we, we need like, we need things like right from ants upwards, don't we, mm. to clean up the world. Mm. Like, so when a big animal dies, right, then obviously something would have to clean it up. Uh, so it'd be better if there's something that can clean it up, wouldn't it? Rather than yeah, you having I, to clean <laughs> Rather than I you th I'm also thinking about human, my personal... Um, fears? No, attachment to nature would... Yeah, my fears of nature would disappear. Of course, I yeah. would be much more in tune with nature and be able to play with animals that but that's you. I I'm now see as dangerous. Well, it would apply to everybody. Yeah, but... Um, that's not what God has created, that's what we've created. We've created the violence in nature. Yeah, and I'm saying that would disappear. It would disappear. It, yeah. Yeah, but that's not disappearing because of anything God's done. No. It's disappearing because we've chosen to reverse the mm. choice we've made. I'm, I'm wanting to focus on what God, the things that God is okay. doing. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Uh, if we go Costa Eagle and Jennifer on this side, keep your hand up, Jenny. Uh, involving us in uh, baby making process yes. to show his love for us. Okay, so so the, uh, to to teach us uh, how he feels about you know the new baby coming in and it's sort of how he sees us. So what what would you summarize that as being? Uh, All uh, those co things. Co-creating with him or something like that. So involving us in co-creating. in creating. Yeah. So that... So we can be feel, feel um, the beauty of that, you know, the beauty of creation and... So isn't he really educating us? Yeah. Edu educating us to create. Yeah. Don't you do that with your children? Like, like a good a good parent basically doesn't just give the child a whole heap of things without helping the child learn how to create them for themselves, does it? Does it? We we help the child learn how to create things for themselves. That that would be a good definition a, a definition of a good parent. So obviously if God is good, if God's a good parent, then God would also be educating us how to create too, which, which God is doing, obviously, because um, we, we do create, we do finish up even having children. He even The procreative process is all about educating us about children. Mm. Okay, anything else that God's doing? We were over at Jennifer. There'd be peace in me and peace in the world. Um, I can't agree with that no. because to me, um, to me, that's what we create, okay. right? And we, we've got the choice to create that or not create that. I'm, I want to talk about the things that God has. That if God was good, what would God do? Is harmony in the same as peace? Yeah, I feel that the reason why the world's in disharmony is because we've chosen using our will to to cause it to be in disharmony and and therefore who has to reverse that we do and and god's given it the potential to to be good but 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 that's up to us that's up to what we choose all right these are happening whether we choose them or not <laughs> do you follow me yeah if we straight behind you he's given us freedom to choose um isn't he? The yeah, that's right. So if, if God is really good, like this is the, the, uh, the free will issue, isn't it? The, the fact that he's given us free will, the freedom to choose is, is a great thing, isn't it? Isn't that what a good parent does to their child too? Gives them the freedom to choose for themselves within certain boundaries. And what are those boundaries? Well, they're boundaries of what the parent decides is loving. And so what God's done is the same thing, obviously. If we pass straight back to Claudia on this side, and then if we come down to Yvonne on this side, and we'll work our way up. So if we come down. Leave your hand up, Yvonne. So. Right. If God is good, it means that, um, that um, he treats us all equally. 
and okay. fairly and that the laws are consistent. Okay, so this is very important, two very important issues there. One, one is equality is, is, is basically the law and the other one is loving laws, the loving guidelines, isn't there? What's going to help us? Loving guideline, guidelines. Loving laws or loving guidelines that that determine what happens to us. Okay. And we're down to Yvonne. Yeah. Um, is this where God will transform our soul so that we have like an eternal existence and it's more divine like? Yeah, well, so, so really what you're saying is that it, it, growth would be continuously possible. Yes. Wouldn't it? So there'd be continuous growth of, of the individual. Of the, yes, and there's also an aspect of divinity. Kind of, it would be... Well, I don't know if you could presume that just from okay. God being good. Um, but you could certainly presume, if God is good, that growth... Is obviously something that's going to continue to occur, and, and and so we continue to grow and continue to change as a part of a part of life. Yep. Talia, thanks. Let's go straight across and, and then back. Um, will God teach us the truth about Him? Like, teach yeah. To me, that's this truth about life, truth about God, truth that. about how the universe works, truth about God. Uh, you know how we work. Everything. Cool. Truth about everything, yeah. Joshua, you um, Could we bring in um, like immortality? Well, I, think, I don't think we could assume that um, necessarily, but, but it's certainly something that happens, but I'm, I don't think we could assume that based from God is good. What I'm doing here is just saying, I'm saying to you, if God is good, what would we think would be available to us? Right? Yep. If we go back to Graham, straight back. And then on this side, if we come down to Dave, uh, if we go right up to Dharma first, you're right up there. So uh, he'd give us a huge playground to play in and explore. Okay, just like a parent would do, right? Yeah. Playground. So we could probably write. It's best to be written as a universal playground, which which should help us um, feel like it's okay to experiment, shouldn't it? Just like a child would in a playground. Sorry, it's a bit small there on the end, but got it there in the end. Dharma? He'd give us love. Definitely, wouldn't he? If God was good, we would definitely be loved. We would be loved. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And if we go across this side and then down to Dave on this side. Just. Anyone on this side's fine. Yeah. Uh, don't we already have these things? I'm saying, imagine for a moment God existed and God was good. These things would all be on tap, wouldn't they? Yeah. Yeah. If so, what? What's your question? I'm just looking Alex? at it and going, well, we already have the ability to grow, and we already have a playground. We already have the potential to be loved if we're open to it. Mm -hmm. um, so well, what's my point, do you think, in well, all this? that we already have these, if we're open to God. No, my point is that God is good. He's yeah. already proving he's good. Yeah. So he's already, we've already got these things. Yeah. So it must mean that God is good. And we've got these things without earning them. We don't have to earn them. We've got them anyway. Isn't it wonderful that we have a God who's willing to give us a whole heap of things, even though if we look at it, you know, the average person will go, if the average person was being a bad person, you'd say they don't deserve anything. Right? Wouldn't you? So if God, if God was nasty in any way, you'd think God would take away a lot of these things. But no, God hasn't taken away at all. In the first century I said, God makes the sun shine and, and the water rain on the wicked and the righteous. And why did I say that? For the same reason what I'm trying to get at here with you. See, the average person wouldn't do that. 
the average person on earth is if somebody treats you badly or somebody treats someone you love badly you pummel them into the ground <laughs> isn't that the average person on earth response uh, the average person on earth's response is punish them you know don't give them anything make sure they suffer like if god was interested in your suffering don't you think he has enough reason already to make you suffer <laughs> given what you've chosen to do right but but these things are proof that god is good right now wh why have i raised that with you regarding the rewards if they are the things we know about where God is proving that God's good and that's the result of us sinning like we're getting these things even though we're sinning if, if we're getting these things even though we're sinning how do you think it's going to be when we stop sinning do you think it's going to be worse or better <laughs> it's got to be better right <laughs> better than that so then the question becomes well what is better than that because for a lot of us that's enough isn't it do you see my point yeah so God is treating you good before you even deserved it All right. now if a person's that loving to treat you good even though you you know you never deserved it you never earned it then that tells me that God's very good, right? Better than anybody I know on the planet. Right? So that tells me that maybe there's a whole heap of other things on offer for, the, for those people who do engage their will to love that are beyond these things. These aren't beyond just pleasure and happiness beyond being loved beyond growing beyond having you know loving laws beyond equality beyond the gift of free will beyond the possibility of creating beyond finding out the truth about things beyond supporting our life beyond beauty beyond all those things there must be other things mustn't there mm. That's it. And what I'm asking you to do is that if God's already doing these good things, then surely it would make sense that if you bring your life in harmony with love and truth, besides your own pleasure and joy and happiness being increased, there must be a whole lot of other things on offer that you're yet to discover. Right? Things that you can only imagine things that you can't even imagine there must be things that you can't even imagine if God's an infinite being with infinite amount of love and God's this good that he can give us all of these things even though we're bad <laughs> for the average part you know a lot of the times we're doing the wrong thing a lot of the times we're sinning a lot of times we're hurting other people hurting other of his children even that's what we're doing and yet we still get all of these good things from God and God doesn't withdraw them just because we've chosen to ignore the law God doesn't withdraw them even though we're sinning we still have them and if we still have all these good things even though we're sinning then what's it going to be like when we stop sinning there must be a whole lot of other things that will happen automatically that are even better than what we have now isn't that true must be logically Yvonne you would like to say um, I was thinking about free will and why would um, such a loving parent give us free will and I realized because there is something better and um, and that's love and I only have an inkling of an idea of what the potential possibilities are of love at 
even the level of just being at one with God, mm. just it's beyond comprehension to it me is, now. It is for the majority, yeah. So let, let's write down what is on offer that we haven't yet got. Yeah. Let's do that. So these are the things that are the potential if we engage our will in harmony with love now. These are the things we got because our will was, you know, it doesn't matter how our will's engaged, we still get them. Isn't that wonderful? But now let's look at the things that happen when our will is engaged. Well, the very first thing is we have a relationship with God. Imagine that. It's like, imagine that that is a huge thing. You know, we say it frequently. I've said it to you frequently. But I feel many of you have not considered the enormity of that one advantage. Right? The very creator of the entire universe, like you imagine the power to create the entire universe, the immense power. That very creator of the entire universe is not only willing to create you and have a relationship with you and is willing to power share with you, <laughs> right? but also you can actually have a relationship with that being, like a one-on-one. -on -one. You can have one-on-one -on -one conversations with that being. Like, you try and get a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the President of the USA. Or even with the Prime Minister of Australia. And you see how hard it is. Right. Anybody who you even admire, you try and get a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them. It's pretty hard. Right. But God is able to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with all of you at the same time even. And not only with all of you, but every person he's ever created. And he's offering that to you. And what's the advantage of this one-on-one -on -one conversation? I don't have to go through trials, trial after trial after trial after trial, experimenting with truth anymore. God will share the truth that I'm willing to listen to. It's like being able to sit on somebody's knee and say, Daddy, could you tell me about how the sun works? And so he tells you. And then he sa you say to him, how can I make a, uh, you know, like a, some kind of a power generator for the earth population? So he tells you that too. He just shares information with you because you want to know and because you're open to hearing it. That's the potential. Like it's amazing potential, isn't it? Like the very creator of everything is willing to share with you how he created everything. And he's willing to share with you how everything works. He's willing to share with you how to use everything. He's willing to share with you how to develop yourself further into being a person that you currently couldn't even recognise. He's how to even how to share. He's willing to share with you how to become a completely different being. And he created the potential for that to happen and the laws as well for that to happen. And he did that before you even arrived. It's not like he's madly trying to patch up the universe for your arrival, he's already done all of it. Right. So this relationship with God is huge, huge benefits if you can have it. If it's possible, it's worth having, right? <coughs> now at this stage the majority of you don't even believe it's possible. That's why I haven't engaged it. But, but that's an experiment too, isn't it? Finding out whether it is possible or not. That's also an experiment that you can engage. Learn for yourself how to do that. Right? Wonderful, wonderful potential there. Like, if that's not enough added, added to this, then I, I don't think you're satisfied by much <laughs> if that's not enough. But that's not it at all. There's more. <laughs> Now I'm starting to sound like a, a TV advert. <laughs> what else? Grant? Um, 
my mind immediately goes to the celestial realms and everything that is possible when you throw your soul in love, the extreme beauty, the extreme beauty of the music, the colours, uh, the ability to create things, uh, yep. information transfer. But all of those things are still available to even people who are sinning. So like in the sixth fear, people are still sinning. Mm -hmm. They commit the one sin, which is the sin against the Holy Spirit, the very biggest sin you could commit. So a lot of those things you mentioned are all available to them as well. Mm. Mm. So what's not available to them? To create a, a universe or anything? When you're in the celestial, well, no, they can create things, just not as bigger things. That's all. So they still have the pleasure of creation, mm -hmm. but there's some things that are just not available to them at all. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think they might be? If we come to Julie, and then across to Cardi. Immortality. So immortality is not available. Yes. So this is something that God is offering. And honestly, it's another thing that you just cannot imagine how important it's going to be to immortality, to your life, to to know that you can never die, to know that you can never existence can be never rubbed out, to know that as as long as God exists, you exist. All right. Most of your fears at the moment are all surrounding the feeling, the fear of death, the fear of some process in the future occurring that causes you to not exist. And, you know, this rubs a lot of that out for you. Plus, given immortality, it means that you now have an associated thing with that. Can you see what the associated thing must be? living forever everlasting life everlasting life now we don't know the people who have not received you know God's love don't know whether they have everlasting life or not but the people who have received God's love know for certain they have everlasting life and just to conceive that for a moment, how, many, how long is it? The average person here, like how many of us are 50, less than 50? Uh, about half, higher than 50? About half, maybe a bit over. So probably average age is 52, 53 here at the moment. Right, that's probably the average age. Not very long, hey? Imagine that you, somebody come up to you and said, how old are you? And you go, I'm 1,254,653 years old. Would, would you feel like you had time constraints anymore? <laughs> like, would you feel like you have to be in a rush to get things done? Would you feel like that you, uh, if you don't get things done, it's a major panic? You can see, can you see just that one thing alone would, would relax your life and cause you to make choices and decisions that are basically based around what's going to bring happiness to others and yourself, wouldn't it? Rather than having to imagine you, you don't have to work anymore, you don't have to, when I say work anymore, you'll work, but, but it will be your pleasure. Not grinding work anymore. Imagine that, where you're doing exactly what you desire to do. And it benefits everyone around you, not just you. Right? This, uh, this thing here is a big thing. It's a big thing. Anything else that you. Think of where we're up to. We were up to somebody. Ah, Cardi, that's right. Um, complete happiness. Yeah, well, that's up here. Oh, that's already been, been listed, yeah. If we come across to Ben, just here. Thanks. Uh, I was going to say, but join back up with your other half of your soul, with the soul union. Very important. Very important. Soul union. The completion of yourself is only possible by you bringing your life into harmony with love and truth. You can't get there any other way. You will never, ever be complete with the other half of yourself 
without embracing the process of learning how using your will to love and using your will in harmony with truth ever so that's a major benefit isn't it that you eventually actually have a complete understanding of who you are yeah big big thing big thing if we come down to Dave and across to Jane <coughs> leave your hand up Jane so Laura can see you thanks so I guess with what you're saying there that, the, that there's something you would feel something missing if you if you didn't that's exactly what I'm saying Dave so the people who are in the sixth dimension of the spirit world will feel a number of things missing not just if they choose to remain where they are eventually they will feel a number of things missing one is the relationship with God another one is the fact that they still wonder whether they're immortal or not they don't know and another is they still feel like they don't really have a complete relationship with the other half of themselves the very things that would satisfy most of your existence, you're missing. Yeah. And we've got very little concept of that. Mm. Yeah, because we're used to being separate. You know, we're used to thinking we're going to die at any minute and we're used to not having a relationship with God and we're used to being separate from our other half. So we, we, it's, to us it's like normal, right? But, but once you've experienced those particular things, Honestly, they are the, probably the biggest things that I've ever experienced, those three things, are the biggest things in my entire experience. Does that make sense? And, and this is what, they are the biggest things that I can think of that are the benefits to you having a relationship. This relationship, just using your will in harmony with love and truth ends up with this relationship because if it's in harmony with truth you recognize the truth that God exists and the truth that God loves you and the truth that God wants a relationship with you and the truth that he created you to have a relationship with him and so you'd engage that relationship and so these things come about by you using your will in harmony with love and truth yeah but they are things that are beyond our conception until we've experienced them this is the trouble with listing rewards can you see because the rewards are beyond our conception to even imagine what it's like. And this is why in the end it, we have to get back to this primary thing. Trusting that God is good. That, that what God's got on offer is far beyond your capacity even to imagine at this point. Given the fact that he's, that he's good enough to do all of those other things we lifted, listed, even though we're sinners and even though we do the wrong thing frequently, he's good enough to do all of that. So, so if he's good enough to do all of that, then he's better than the average person as well. And we need to come back to this trust that God is good in this process. All right, Jane? Growth in the qualities of God? Well, that's a part of the relationship with God, I feel, yeah. Um, although, are you talking about the transference of God's qualities to ourselves? Yes. So that's a... How do you spell it? Ants, ants? A-N-E. A. Look it up for me. You know those. It's A and C, is it? Transference of God's qualities to me. Now you've got no idea what that is, hey? Uh, no idea what that's going to be either in the future you know at the moment God's offering love and we receive that love but who knows what that love is a doorway to other things re receiving other things from God things that we can't even imagine we don't know it could be right so and the, the fact that God's transferred God's love to us and it transforms our soul means that it's highly likely that God's probably got other qualities that God can transfer to us so, yeah, anything else you can think of? So we go to Maxine over. Uh, 
unconditional love. Yeah, but that's a part of the relationship with God, I feel. Okay. Maxine? Yeah. Yeah. Anything else you can think of? If we go to Yvonne on this side. Is there another level of laws that we're not aware of? Mm. There's got to be, doesn't there? Yeah. Because if we've only discovered this amount of laws, mm. then it means that, you know, who knows, who knows, once we get to this soul union state, right, and, and what I'm telling you is there is another level of laws, but anyway, <laughs> but if you just imagine, if you get to the soul union state, you're now a complete soul, that's different than you've ever been before that time. Mm. You know, before that time you were uh, two halves of the soul and two separate bodies and then all of a sudden you're in this complete state. What, what laws govern that state? You don't know. But there must be laws that govern that state. Is, is it um, when you get to that state that you start to um, have the real potential of creativity and so on as the whole soul yeah I, I feel this state's sort of like the soul union state's like you're now a little baby <laughs> <laughs> and you're able to be educated because <laughs> you're ready to be educated now you had to get yourself ready to be educated but now you're ready <laughs> that's what it feels like to me like it feels like that state is the state of like being ready to be educated about a whole field of other experiences and, and, and things that you had no concept existed before you got into that state. And in fact, getting into that state was necessary for you to receive this other education. Yep. And, and you indicated at the um, first assistance groups that um, the potential of a lot of other qualities that we're not even aware of yet. Yeah. Even within our own soul that we're not even aware of. Yeah. yeah. Because there, there's a, the way the two halves of the soul work together in harmony with each other is far different than you working as an individual, you know, in your life. You, you, you never really feel like, like in, in the end, you'll feel like the two are one. And so there's not a need for another. You don't feel any like, separation. At the moment, most of your life is based around separation. In fact, most of you prefer it to be based around separation. So, so not only is it a transference of God's qualities, but obviously there's a whole new set of education. And, and, and I'm going to write this down. I begin my education. <laughs> You can see the importance of getting educated because uh, you can't even really begin your education unless you get some education before then with regard to you know, love and truth in particular. To me, that's the time that you really begin your education. The complete soul now has the ability to be educated. Before then, it was only the two halves getting educated. Completely different process than the complete soul getting educated. Okay. Well, there you go. So not only does God give you all these things even when you're a sinner, but then God also gives you the potential of getting a whole heap of other things because you chose to not be a sinner anymore. Sounds pretty good to me, if it's true. How are you going to find out it's true? Experimenting. Experimenting. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's the only way you're going to find out it's true. Somebody, somebody can come and tell you it's true. But at the end of the day, unless you choose to do, engage the experiments and experience it for yourself, you won't know whether it's true. And you certainly won't get the joys of it being true, personally applied. It's only by engaging experiments and and engaging the process that you'll actually learn whether it's true or not. Right. So that's what I've been trying to inspire you to do for 10 years or more. <laughs> it's my pleasure. 
Yeah. Interesting, huh? There's a lot of things that are just not going to be possible without developing your will for love and truth. But if you decide you're not going to develop your will for love and truth at this stage, you know what will happen? Firstly, whether you decide to not do it here or in the spirit world, doesn't matter. Eventually, God's laws will line out all your rough edges. But, but it will be done involuntarily on your part. <laughs> right, so it will be imposed upon you. Because the law will impose this growth upon you over a long period of time. And eventually you'll reach the sixth dimension, the sixth sphere of your spirit life state, and you'll be pretty happy. But you won't ever have these things. You won't. And you'll actually come to know that you don't, you don't have them as well. You come to feel that you don't have them. And at that point, if God's love has not, is not being offered, then it means that you won't have them for a long time. But if God's love is still being offered, then you'll have the choice to even get it then if you want. Isn't that wonderful? It's like God's not going to try to hammer you into the ground just because you rejected God's love now. But take care with the gift. Because if you decide to not receive the gift now, you don't know how long the gift's going to be open to you. That's all. You don't know. It's not a threat of God. It's just you don't know how long God's going to offer the gift. You don't. And if God, because God never offered it up until 2,000 years ago. So that means that there were periods of human history where God didn't offer the gift. Right? Laura? Yeah, um, do you know why? Um, like, Yeah, because no one on earth wanted it. <laughs> oh, right. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So you, you're basically the first sort of... No person. one even knew it was possible to want, let alone wanted it. Yeah. Aside from the first human couple, obviously, who were offered it and rejected it. So, sorry, just one more thing. And so when you, because you mentioned in the channelings as well um, with the Sonia, I think it was, mm -hmm. um, about the, the love tap possibly being turned off. Mm -hmm. um, is that just basically because that's our will? We don't want to receive the love, so basically that'll just be... It's not just dependent on our will, no. It's sort of like, like is the child receiving a gift dependent on the child's will? Who, who's it dependent upon? The parents. The parents, yeah, parents will. Right? So we, we have to honour the fact that God has will. And most of us don't honour that. We don't. we don't. We don't think that God has will. God's allowed to offer a gift and God's allowed to not offer one. We don't think that. And, and that's a misunderstanding of the use of will. We actually believe that God should always do something. That's what we believe which is an error in our belief system. God shouldn't ha always do something. God's allowed to choose what God does, just like you're allowed to choose what you do. You can offer the gift of your love and you can withdraw it if you wish. God can do the same. God's allowed to. God's got will, just like you have. And if a person truly appreciated that, when the gift is offered, they'd receive it, would they not? They would choose to w desire it and receive it if they truly appreciated what was on offer. Yeah. Right? So this is the thing we need to come to understand is that God has will. Just like you, God gave you the gift of free will. Before you even conceived of the idea of it, God had already given it to you, this gift of free will. And the reason why God gave it to you, one of the reasons, is because God wanted you to make your own choices and make your own decisions. God wanted you to choose a relationship with God or not. It's up to you. You're allowed to do whatever you want, including allowed to choose to not have a relationship with the very person who created you. Now, what kind of parent on earth does that for you? Most parents on earth go, what? You're my child. You must do this for me. You must have this relationship with me. You know, how dare you contemplate not having one? You're allowed to contemplate not having a relationship with even your own parents. From God's perspective, that's what God's done with you. He, you're allowed to not have a relationship with God if that's what you so choose. 
But you're giving up these things if you do. That's what you're doing. You're, you're permanently giving up these things. When I say permanently, while you decide to not have a relationship with God, those things will not be possible. doesn't matter how much you struggle, how much you desire them, how much you try to find them from other alternative means, none of it's going to be possible without the relationship with God. And none of it is definitely not going to be possible without your desire to use your will in harmony with love and truth. So that's what I want to leave with you about this subject. Does that sound all right? Isn't it interesting, eh? What's available? And isn't it interesting how the majority of us never consider the potentiality or the value of what is available? So what I would recommend that you do is start considering these things as having value to you. Having worth enough to begin an experiment with God. Have worth enough to motivate your will to live your life in harmony with love and truth. God's going to still look after you even if you don't do that. Even if you're a sinner, God's going to make sure you're fed and then you're watered. God's going to make sure you know, that you, you can still grow and you can still have interactions, relationships and everything. God's going to make sure all those things happen because all of God's laws make sure of that already. That's not going to change. Right? So there's no, there's no carrot and stick here. There's only carrot and carrot. Uh, there's no the stick. There's not. It's not a, like a God's going. If you do, if you don't do this, I'm going to punish you for the rest of your existence. It's not like that at all. God, God wants you to be happy for the rest of your existence, even if you don't choose God. Right? That's what God wants for you to be happy, even if you don't choose God. But God knows that if you don't choose God, and if you don't choose your will to love, and you don't believe in God's goodness and have some faith in that then your happiness will be limited. It'll be far beyond your wildest capacity to imagine now, but it'll still be limited. And these particular things are only available to those who choose to use their will to love, choose to use their will to want truth. And to me, it's like God's really saying to us, like, the rewards of wanting to use your will to love and truth are far beyond your own internal capacity to understand or imagine. Which is what you would expect from a loving God, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's have a ten minute break.